Hi, I'm Mark Donovan from HomeEditionPlus.com, and today I'm going to show you a few examples of crown molding and some tips on how to install it. What you're looking at here is an example of dental crown molding. To minimize splicing, boxes have been inserted at the midpoint between the walls. Because of the fact that walls are typically not straight or 90 degrees to each other, boxes have also been used in the corners in this example to help uh, ease the splicing and again reduce the, the signs of the splicing uh, between the two intersections of the walls. In this example of crown molding in a dining room, you can see there's inside corners and outside corners that have been formed using boxes, again, to minimize uh, the splicing or the effects or visual effects of the splicing. In this example, you're seeing a tray ceiling area with a basic three and a half inch crown molding with the top and bottom underboard. And again, boxes are used uh, to separate the uh, midpoints as well as used in the corners, again, to uh, minimizing the splicing effect. And what we have here is a hallway where crown molding is just now being installed. And what you're looking at here is basic crown molding, five and a half inch crown molding, with no boxes or no underboards um, being used for the installation of this. So for this particular crown molding project, we're using five and a half inch uh, crown molding. Uh, when we selected it, we made sure that it was perfectly straight, no twists in it, otherwise it would be a very difficult job hanging it. And then we brought it home and let it sit for about 24, 48 hours to get adjusted to the temperature of the room and the humidity in the room. Then we uh, primed it and we added a sealer coat of finished paint on it so that we minimize the effort of painting once the crown molding is actually installed. To cut crown molding, it's best to turn it upside down and backwards relative to how it will hang on the wall so that you can position it nicely up against the saw to make your cut. When making inside corners, you can either do 90 degree corners, as what we have here, or you can do coping cuts, as you see here, using a coping saw. To make your coping cuts, you take one of the sections of board that's been cut at a 45 degree angle, and at the bottom and the top, you cut a straight perpendicular line to the relief points, um, first relief points, again at the top and the bottom of the crown molding. Once we removed the, both the top and the bottom wedges, uh, we then take our coping saw and cut, cut along the paint line at a 45 degree angle to basically back cut the crown molding material. Once we've cut the back side of the 45 degree angle board, we now have our coped edge. It can now use it to form our inside corner uh, seam. And now we have our finished inside corner cut using the coping technique. The first thing you want to consider when installing crown molding is make sure you nail into nail points. That means the stud walls along the walls and the ceiling joists or strapping uh, on the ceiling. For this particular crown molding, which is five and a half inch crown molding, we need to draw a four inch line coming down from the ceiling all along the length of the wall. And we're going to score that line and make that line again traverse the entire length of the wall. We do this to ensure that the crown molding is straight along the wall and the ceiling. The next important thing to remember is that you need to apply wood glue to all joints before installing them on the wall. This helps to make sure that there's not separation uh, between the sections of wood uh, at the joint. When installing crown molding, it's important to use a finished nail gun. So now that we've completed the first section of crown molding, we'll move on to the next portion. One of the most difficult sections of crown molding to install is the double-edged coped cut. Once you fasten the crown molding to the walls and ceiling, you need to fill in the nail holes and the seams with wood filler. For the edges of the crown molding, you want to apply a silicon caulk along the wall and the bottom edge of the crown molding and along the ceiling and the top of the crown molding. After applying a bead of caulk, use a wet rag to clean up the seam. Now just touch up the crown molding with a little paint and your crown molding project is done. So those are some styles and tips for installing crown molding. Crown molding can really dress up the appearance of a room. If you want more information on installing crown molding, look for our ebook at homeeditionplus.com today.